I'm going to show you how I make my cylinders that I will then carve into a texture roller. Some things to think about when you make a texture roller is the diameter of the cylinder. If you don't want your texture to repeat in a visual plane on your pot, you want to think about this diameter and think about the diameter of the pot that you're going to make. So if I want to make, say, a bowl that has a texture around the outside, I would want to make a really big texture roller so that I don't have that texture repeated on the same visual plane. But this works fine on a mug. So I'm going to use this form here to make my cylinder. It is the broken rolling pin. So I'm just going to wrap some newspaper around it. So because I'm not actually making this into a finished pot, I'm not worried about taking that canvas texture off the back. If you're trying to design a slab built mug and you're not really sure what length the slab needs to be to be a certain diameter, this is um, also going to show you how to figure that out. So I take the slab, I wrap it around the form, I wrap the left side in first and then I wrap the right hand side over top, just gently. Then I'm going to take a straight edge and I'm going to cut through both of those slabs at a 45 degree angle with my feddling knife, straight to the form. Gently peel this little bit out from inside there and now this should line up to fit together. So if you wanted to make a series of pots or a series of cylinders, of the same dimension, then you could open this back up, measure the length of that slab, and then make multiples of it. Some things to consider when you're making a texture roller is also the height. So if you want to make a mug that's going to be taller than this dimension, then maybe you need to make a taller texture roller. Most of my pots, even the teapot main form, isn't much more than that, which is 12 centimeters. I like this when I'm, when I'm putting these two beveled edges together, I like it to overlap a little bit more. I don't want it to be completely flush. Having that just a little extra overlap really holds it together. So once I've pinched it together pretty well, then I'm going to gently move it to the edge of the bat and take my brayer. <laughs> and smooth that and compress it together. Now you can do two things at this point with a texture roller. On this one, I don't want to see that seam. I want to be able to just keep rolling it if I want to or put this down on the clay at any point. So I would smooth the, the seam off on that one. <clears throat> but I do have one at home where I actually accentuated the, the seam and when I roll that in the clay, it has this sort of block print look to it that I enjoy. So it depends on the look you're going for. Let's take a metal rib and clean that seam off of there. So there's two different ways that I texture these up. One way is by carving like this one and another way is to push stamps into the clay at this point. So it's a great way if you are using a repeater stamp to get that repeated just one time because it is a, a time consuming process repeating. You repeat it on here and then you can roll that into your clay. The thing that I do like about repeating the stamp though is there's sort of an organic um, quirkiness to it that it will be different on each pot that I make. So I need to, I'm going to let this guy stiffen up and then I'm going to carve him up. My cylinder now is stiffened up a little bit. Um, it still does fit around the sil this form, which is great because sometimes when you make these cylinders, you end up getting a bit of a bell bottom on one end. So if you can still fit it on a form, it's another beautiful thing about having a lot of different size forms in the studio, is you can put it on the form and just gently roll it across a smooth surface to get the whole thing a nice even plane. Because if it's bell shaped and you go to roll it in your clay, these parts that bell out clearly are going to dig into the clay more than this. So your, these parts, the texture on these parts will dig in, but the texture here will not show up. So try and get that nice and even. It's also kind of nice to hold onto like this because it's still a little bit soft. If I hold here, I'm not going to mangle it and put fingerprints all over it. 
So I'm going to make one similar to this with the trees. One thing to think about on these is the negative space. So there's a lot of areas on this texture roller that aren't textured. And that just creates this nice, smooth, empty canvas area on the pot. It doesn't have to be completely textured. So now I'm just going to kind of look at this shape and figure out how far apart I want my trees to be. So I'm just going to draw some lines for the trees. And then I go in with the fettling knife and I just kind of thinking, I look at tree lines a lot now ever since I started carving these trees up and whatever, especially that sort of dusky time of night when the sun's going down, you see more of like a silhouette of different trees on a horizon. Looking at how, how the branches look that way rather than how you think a branch should look and um, where the, all the little pokey bits stick out. It's just starting to change to that bone dry color. That's my favorite time to do any refinements. And I'm just peeling any little burrs off there and cleaning it up a little bit, taking little chunks out. When I get close to what I think might be a finished thing, I take some nice soft clay. Because if I tried to roll this into a slab, I would crush it. So I'm just gently pushing the soft clay into the form and then I peel the clay off and I get a, an idea of what, what sort of depth I have. Like, is that going to be deep enough that I have enough texture sticking up on my pot? And then I can still go back in there and change. So I might just like make this part a little deeper and a little bit more defined. And then when it's completely finished, I'll let it dry and I'll just bisque it with my other bisque ware just to a regular bisque temperature and that's strong enough. The nice thing about it being bisqued is that it resists the clay so when I roll it across the clay it's not going to stick. If I took it to temperature it would start to get a little sticky. So that's that. That's how I make a texture roller.